So I'm still sick. Um, today is Friday. Um, so I apologize if I can't really talk too loud. Um, I so I apologize for my nose is still stuffy. My throat itchy and dry, <coughs> and I tired. I can't really open my eyes as well, but. Hey, I'll keep yawning. Um, but <coughs> so, oh my god. So, yesterday, which is Thursday, um, I went to the ER again. Uh, so, this time, I went. <laughs> Because I had the drop in falling sensation now, keep in mind. I haven't had the drop in floor. I haven't had the drop in uh, the floor, um, like sinking to the ground sensation. <laughs> slash tilting. This bad. <laughs> Since I first experienced panic attacks back in 2016. Um, it wasn't like the vertical feeling where the woman's spinning. Oh, this was like, okay, so this is might be a trigger warning, okay? So here, it felt like this. Like this, see? that? They said that is not really vertical because it's not spinning. So it was more, like, I'll do it again. So it's like more like a slow, so it feels like I was doing this. And it drop, and they said hmm. it doesn't seem like a vertical because, like I mentioned, it's not spinning. Hmm. But regardless of what it was or what it wasn't, it was still hmm. a horrible sensation. Okay, so it's like me walking, and then out of nowhere, swoop, like I went down by a drop. Hmm. You know when you go on like a roller coaster up 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 straight down and this is without being on the roller coaster now what did i do before that well a couple of things i wanted to go back to work yesterday right so i i wanted to save up as much pto hours i could Right, I was doing good. I went up to like a hundred something hours of PTO. I'm on. I get maxed out at hundred twenty. Now I'm back to having, um, just a little bit over two weeks of sick town. I mean PTO and not, and I didn't want to take time off because of my anxiety. But oh my god, the back of my head is so tight. Um, I will try to make some videos of all my anxiety symptoms you know from my head to toe but that's i will try to do some later on today tonight or tomorrow when i get when i find a best time to do it i should say but so when i had to call 911 because i couldn't my i had to ask my parents to call because my head, um, I went to the doctor on Wednesday, my primary doctor, <laughs> for the headache, right? And the headache lasted for two days. I still have it today. But I had it for two days, really bad, all freaking day. <laughs> right? It's the headache, like, you know, like right here, like that type. Okay, I'm wearing a hat, so just imagine if someone came and just squeezed my head like really tight right here, and then the back of my head is felt tight to like really bad tension, and then I couldn't open my eyes. I do have lights, my lights on as you can see, and I have it on. I don't know how many percent brightness I have it on, and um, and then I. I couldn't like I couldn't really open my eyes uh, even right now right and 
As soon as I wake up, <laughs> they mail what time I went to sleep. Well, I took a nap. And as soon as I woke up, headache. Right, so I, so when I woke up, I slowly opened my eyes like this. Start looking, start looking. Bam, headache. Bam, dizziness. <laughs> so what do I do? <clears throat> I just sit down, see, so see, I couldn't, sometimes I can't even lay down because the headache was felt even worse as I lay down, right? So when I lay down, the back of my head, right, the front of my head feels heavy and it feels like I was pushing took my head back, like someone was just pushing me back like that, right? And um, so yesterday when I went to the ER, when the fire department got in, <clears throat> they they told me um my blood pressure was high. <clears throat> um, I forgot how was my blood sugar and everything, but my breathing was heavy. Then the EMS got there shortly. They told me the same thing, <laughs> and you know they asked you you know those common question. Have you ever felt like this, et cetera, et cetera. And I told them, um, I haven't felt like this, but I do have anxiety, right? And they say, oh, we can tell because of the way it looks just stressed out. Your, your breathing, uh, stuff like that. <coughs> <coughs> and then they say, you know, your headache might, and your dizziness might just be called from your anxiety. But we'll bring you to the hospital just to, just to be sure. Now, here's the other thing. When I went to my doctor on Wednesday for the headaches, right? They said, you know, because you're sick, also sick, that increases your anxiety, which is true. You know, when you have anxiety and you feel sick, all your symptoms feels like they amplify by 10. You dizzy? Okay, that dizziness goes up. You have a dry, itchy throat because of anxiety? Increase. You know, everything increase, right? And right now I can feel this pressure in my ears. You know, um, when you have anything with the ears, instantly you feel dizzy. The other thing that I would say is, when I went to the ER, actually when I went to my primary doctor, I um, I asked him, could you say, give me a referral to the ENT? He said, oh, I just look in your ears, I don't see anything. I was like, oh my gosh. Got a little bit frustrated, I'm not gonna lie. Because, you know, I, I wanted to because he looked in my mouth, he said, I don't see anything wrong, but, you know, I would rather see, like, a second opinion with a specialist, you know, so they can do their own testing. <coughs> Here's the other thing. Since I've been to that doctor, I don't remember, has he ever ordered any blood work for me? The only blood work I have ever done was at the ER, right? Um, the ER doctor that I went to yesterday, I actually like, because um, I asked her um, after she explained, like asked me what's going on. I told her about the headaches, the migraines, and all these sensations, like you know, the headaches, the migraine, the tension, the shooting, stabbing pain, the it, like my brain felt like it was vibrating inside, the head feels heavy. Then before I could say it, she said, you know, have you ever got a CT scan? I said, no, I've been trying to get one for my primary. And she said, what did he say? He said, you know, your headache is from your anxiety. And she said, well, you know, you're here now at the ER, we can do a CT scan, we'll do the chest x-ray because you were breathing heavily um, according to the EMS. So we want to check all that stuff out. Your thyroid, you know, your blood tests, all these um, 
blood work and so I was there for like four hours or so and then she said <laughs> she said you know I apologize they don't have, we don't have any room there's a lot of people are still waiting <laughs> to be checked and you know I said oh, it's okay and then she said I, I can I know you have a really bad headache but you know try to sit at the in the ER lobby mm. try to sit mm. as far as you can from like the bright lights or from people the noise etc as you can I was like okay and then mm. um when I went to get you know first I went to the chest x-ray mm. okay and then you know they check my um blood pressure again Blood pressure went down a little bit, but still high. Um, my oxygen was fine. <clears throat> then the chest X-ray, and then a few minutes later, <clears throat> chest X-ray. I think I went to <clears throat> get my blood work. <clears throat> Actually, the, my blood work was less um, than my um, <clears throat> what you call it. My CT scan, <clears throat> CT scan after that, went to get the blood work, then the blood work got to wait for like um, an hour for the results, but it was over an hour before the doctor came in. Talked to me, she came up to me and said, you know, your, C your CT scan was perfectly fine, so I, I don't want you to wait too long for those results, but you know, and then we were still waiting for your blood work, and then like, maybe an hour or two later, she said, your blood work is fine, but let's come into the room. I still apologize. We don't have a a bed for you to, like, lay down because I can tell you uh, you're in torture because your your headache and your back and all that stuff. And um, she gave me some Motrin pill, I think. I forgot what it was. Just, and then I took it. <clears throat> um... And then she, she wait for a few minutes, and then you know she'll let me go and give me a bunch of paperwork, like you know, tell me what, why I was there, or what kind of symptoms I had, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <clears throat> How, you know, she told me, you know, go see a therapist because a lot of the symptoms you can get. You know, from anxiety, you talk to uh, my therapist, a psychologist, you know, CBT, to change your your thinking, because the way you think will impact the way how you feel. Like for example, <clears throat> you might have a headache, but you might make it worse by just thinking negatively about how you feel. That increases your headache. She also say, <clears throat> you might feel pain in one area. But your head feels it more because you're thinking about it too much. Like for example, I have the pain in my right here. I can also feel it here. She said the reason why you might feel it there and but it's not really from there is because you're thinking about that pain too much, then your head become has feels the pain as well. So you're creating you have the pain here, but you're creating the the, the pain inside your brain. <laughs> and it might not even be from your headache because you're just creating that the pain and then your brain is like manifests itself into a pain that you feel I know it's so I know it's so difficult to understand I was so confused myself <clears throat> as well and <clears throat> as far as the dizziness <clears throat> she gave me she told me to take some um, allergy medication because I told her as soon as I blew my nose Yesterday morning, I was going to go to work, right? I blew it, and then my ears pop. I can hear this crunchy sound in my jaw. Have my ears, I, I can feel it too, this crunchiness. I don't I can't really explain how it feels, but it just feels like this crunchy sound feeling. And then she said, um, you are congested. So... You know, that's why you have the headaches like right here because if you can just sit here from your nose if you keep doing this and then you're blowing it and it's a clock and it's built up 
you might have like a little virus going on there. <laughs> so, and when you lay down, it feels worse because you're going like this. <coughs> like, because I was going like this. And then she told me <clears throat> um, to try to drink more fluid. Don't blow my nose too hard. I'll try not to blow if I don't have to. If I sneeze, just wipe it. You know, keep wash your hands, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If anyone else is sick in the house, anything like that, you know. Um, and then told me to take some Sirtec. When I went home, I bought some. I took it this morning. I didn't take it yesterday in cold to try to clear up that sinus here. You know, calm. I do go, I do go back to work on Monday. And if I'm still sick, I'm just going to wear a mask to work. Uh, I, I don't want to um, get anyone else sick. Uh, and then she said, <clears throat> try to relax your mind. You don't, don't, don't overthink too much. And here's the other thing. My primary doctor, be every time I go there because of, of um, whatever reason, he always says, no, <laughs> be kind to yourself, meaning, you know, no matter what you're going to try not to blame yourself on everything. And I'll be honest, I do blame myself on a lot of things. He said, I'm not a therapist, but <laughs> when you blame yourself, teaching yourself negative thoughts, your brain reacts to those negative thoughts. And it all it knows its negativity, so when it has positive thoughts, positive vibes, you're thinking you're happy, you smile. Like you know when you try to fix smile, right? and then you like you can't do it because your brain doesn't know what smiling is. If you see other people happy, you might feel you might even feel sadder because you're like, oh, I don't know what happiness is. happiness means. But when you hear people screaming, yelling. You tune into that, you're like, yes, that's what I want to hear because you're used to it. <laughs> but uh, you're used to it, and yet at the same time, you feel panicky because of it. You know, it's like, teach your brain negativity, it knows negativity. Teach your positive, it wants that positive. So it's like, my it feels like my brain is like half half, you know. So sometimes I watch like funny videos before I go to sleep. <laughs> you know, um, people laughing, making jokes. Not like jokes where they're like making fun of people, but just like, you know, jokes. Funny. You're not like, not like hurting anyone. And then I smile, I laugh, and then my brain's like, oh, I like that. You know, and then I slowly feel better. But... <laughs> If I'm watching like the news, I if, if I hear something like someone got killed, etc., instantly my head starts hurting, you know. So, and then you know when you surround yourself with negative thoughts, it bundles up in your brain, and then that's how your brain knows. It's like it's like a little kid, you know. When you teach a kid something, as they get older, they learn it more. They learn it more. So if you're teaching your a kid negative thought and someone else teaching them positive thought, but if you're teaching them seventy five percent negative, twenty five positive, that twenty five percent of the positive will slowly become ten five percent, and then the negative thoughts will overcome the positive, <laughs> and then you start getting those thoughts that are in your head like, oh, I want to think positive, but the negative say like, nope. Too bad, um, 75% of your brain is already stuck on negative thoughts. And, you know, now I have to rewire my brain. I bought, um, you know, I bought these little notebooks a um, few weeks ago. Now I'm going to start writing down my thoughts, how I feel that day, and stuff, and see if I can just, like, change my thoughts again. No, I did it before, and I'm going to have to do it again. Because, you know, I don't take medication for it, right? So if I wake up and I feel 
tired draining and I'm going to be like, oh, here, here I go again. I feel negative. I feel tired. I feel weak. <laughs> oh, I'll go back to bed. I go back to bed. Guess what? My body's going to be so tired. Oh, you're tired. Guess what? Sometimes I feel tired. But when I get up, I start moving. I'm like, I'm doing this. Wait, let's say my brain say, oh, you're tired. Don't go for a walk. I go outside. I go for a walk. Like a walk around the block. I go home. Sit down. Relax. Watch TV. Get up and do it again. My brain's like, hmm. Why did you say you were tired? But well, why could you do that? So it's like, train your mind, train your mind, train your mind. Right? And when I get dizzy, I wake up, I look for the dizziness. Guess what? My brain's going to be, bam, let's get dizzy because that's what you want. So, and then, you know, have you ever felt like, this, like parts of your brain feels like tight? Like sometimes that part of the brain is like, you're thinking and then you're like have you ever realized when you think and then sometimes you're sitting down you're laying whatever it is you're like hmm and then you're looking that way like see i'm looking towards my white corner and then you feel that pain right there it's because you're thinking but you're looking there and then that part of your brain hurts and then you do you know that's what that's what i noticed too so now when i i start thinking like if it's a negative thought oh you're gonna wake up feeling sick. I get up. If I feel sick, I walk around the house. But I just ground myself there. Okay. Go back to the room. If I watch TV, I watch TV. But if I go back in the room, I just lay there and just think about how I feel. It's over. <laughs> so, you know, I... So your negative thoughts will mess with you. You know, um, it's like I say, for me, when I feel the anxiety, my head feels tired. I feel tired, my head feels tired, my whole body feels worn out. That's the thing. When I slowly overcame my anxiety, I said, I can't do it. But the positive thoughts in my head, it's like, what do you mean you can't do it? Get up and go and do it. The easiest thing to do is give up, but you know, sometimes you have to be kind to yourself, just like the doctor said, because if you're not kind to yourself, you're mean to yourself, right? Sometimes your surrounding people might say, oh yeah, you look tired, you look weak, you know, you look this, you look that, and then you might agree. You know, sometimes you sleep eight hours, you still feel tired, you know, if you're sick, like you actually have a fever, cause then you want to sleep, right? But if you have anxiety and you know you're not sick cause you, you took the temperature and and stuff, but you just want to lay down because your thoughts are telling you, hey, what are you doing? Why you get up? You can't do this, you can't do that, go back to sleep down. That, that negative thought is making your body feel weak and tired because it's a negative thought. It's a negative impact of on your body. So you feel tired. You feel weak. You feel drained. But you know. But when you go against your own negative thinking, you change that negative thought to positive. Then you, then you're like, wait a minute. I just said I can't do this, but I did it. Was it hard? Yeah, but I did it. And then continue to do it every day. That negative thought. That's could be 75% of your brain will become 58%, then 40%, then 30 whatever it might be. It just slowly goes away, and then it pushes back of your head. Then the positive comes over your mind, and then it overtakes the negative thoughts. And then your brain is like, hmm, I like this. And then, you know, then you get that relaxing build of sensation in your body. Because you know when you're... You have negative thoughts, your body's all tense like this, right? I do it like this, see? And then the back of your head feels so tense, it shoots up to your head. Then you, next thing you know, your whole body is tired. Your chest is tight. You can't breathe. Then your heart is pounding because it's like, hey, hello, give me some space. I, I need to, I need room to pump blood out. And then 
and then once you once you let loose, like put your hands down, like shake it out, then you're like, hmm, my body feels loose. You know, sometimes I go like this. Now keep in mind when I do that, you might feel lightheaded. I do, I'll be honest, I get lightheaded from doing that too, but I have to like follow where my eyes is. Or sometimes I'll do like little chin tucks, like, like that for a few seconds, few minutes, then I'll have to straighten out my neck. See, like if I keep talking like this, my head looks down, I go up, then it hurts. Uh, so it's like, okay, you know, when you hold your phone, your tap there, are you looking down too long? You're going like this, eh? that shit hurts too, right? Well, I have to realize myself, my brain is going to hurt because my head is not straight. It's like I'm crunching down, you know, but, um, you know, for me to blow my nose and get lightheaded, so that's kind of scary, but, you know, that's, anyways, I apologize for that long video and nonsense going on, but I'm glad that I had my CT scan perfectly fine. Um, I went to my heart doctor yesterday um, as well, I had an ultrasound and then this coming Monday, he's going to talk to me about my results for everything and let's see from there.